watch this video before you choose your ABA program. Hi, I'm Dom, the BCBA mom, and welcome back to my channel. So on today's episode, we are going to get into one of the most important steps you need to consider in order to become a BCBA. So some of us are ready to dive right into this ABA field and we're like, but where do I start? I know that feeling. There are so many programs out here, but don't worry, I'm not gonna leave you out there hanging. We are gonna discuss how to find the best, most effective program for you in this video. But before we get started, do not forget to subscribe to this channel, like this video, comment down below, and ring that notification bell so that you know when I upload new content because we know it just keeps getting better. Let's get right into it. Just so you know, before you find an ABA program, you need to identify which path are you going to take. Right, there is more than one path to becoming a BCBA. Pathway one is an APBA accredited or ABAI accredited or recognized behavior analyst degree program. This signifies that you have earned a degree from a program that has undergone a comprehensive review and been formally recognized by either the APBA or the ABAI as meeting high standards for behavior analysis education. So that just means that you are in a master's program, you got a master's, and it has been accredited by ABAI or APBA. Pathway two is the verified course sequence. This means you have completed a set of specific coursework that meets the BACB minimum requirements for content hours, but not necessarily from a fully accredited program requiring you to use Pathway 2 for BACB certification application. Okay, so it took me a long time to understand the difference between those two, um, maybe because I really didn't care about a path that I was not traveling down, but for me, I took the second pathway because when I came into the field, I already had a master's in psychology, so I didn't have to get another master's. I just took a verified course sequence. Back when I took it, I would think it was about seven or eight additional courses. You have to take them in a certain order, in a certain sequence. And then after that, I had met the eligibility requirements in order to move to the next step, which is supervision and taking the exam. If you don't have a master's already, I would probably recommend that you use the first pathway, which is finding a master's program that is already accredited. And guess what? I'm not gonna leave you out there. I'm going to provide the link for APBA or ABAI certification. So you know if the university that you're thinking about is it even accredited, okay? So once you get that out the way, then we can move to which program are you going to choose? Okay, so let's jump right into how to find the right master's program or course sequence. So spoiler alert, all of this information that we're talking about is coming straight from the BACB handbook, but instead of boring you to tears, I'm gonna make it easy to digest. We're gonna make it fun. We're gonna make it relatable, okay? So get your pen and paper, get ready to take notes because we're gonna dive into how to find you the right master's program for your BCBA. First up, program focus. You want a program that focuses on the things that you are interested in. So think of this process like a dating app right? You're not going to swipe right on something that doesn't align with your values, that doesn't align with your proximity. If a school is too far and you can't get there, if the professors are not your cup of tea, like ask yourself, do they offer courses that excite you? Does the faculty share the same interests in you? 
I had a friend and she chose her program based off of a BCBA who was in experimental behavior analysis and she loved her work and she followed her work and she read her research and noticed that there was an opening in her program and that she offered fellowships. So that's how she chose that program. Personally, okay, so I chose my program here because of the campus. Um, it had a beautiful view of Chicago and the Riverwalk, and they had um, a lot of different clubs on campus, and um, it was easy to get there because it was right off of the train station. So there are a lot of things that you should consider when you are looking for a program, but you wanna make sure it aligns with your values and what you want to do when you become a BCBA. Do you wanna get into experimental behavior analysis? Do you wanna get into forensic science? Do you wanna work in clinics? Do you wanna work with more of organization behavior management? See if the graduate program have specialties or offer courses like that. Next, let's talk about size. Size matters. Are you the type that thrives off big crowds and can learn with a lot of people around or do you need more of that intimate setting? When you are checking out these programs, look at their website and see what the ratio is for faculty to student. I've heard some stories where some of my supervisees were in programs where they could never get a hold of their professor to ask questions, to get any clarity, Everything was asynchronistic and they didn't get any live interactions with their professors or the professor didn't have any office hours for them to join and ask questions like me. I'm the type of person I like to ask question and another question and another question. So I needed for my cohort to be small enough so I can build connections with my cohort mates, but that I also don't get lost in the classroom where no one knows my name and I'm not recognized. So here's a little tip. You can take a peek at the BACB's pass rate. When you look at that table, it also shows how many people took the exam from that university. So that can kind of give you an idea of how many people were in that cohort for that year. Number three, let's talk about the structure of the program. Are you the type of person that needs to be on the scene, in person, physically there in, in order to retain and learn this information? Or are you okay with learning things online? Do you prefer a hybrid type of situation where some of your classes are online and you come to class or you come to the campus maybe once a month or once a quarter? Those are the things that you should think about when you are deciding on the perfect program for you. Personally, because I have a story when it comes to everything. Personally, I was in two ABA programs. The first program that I was in was in like Carbondale, which is really, really far from here. And it was online. And by the time I figured out how to log on and how to just like gather all of my online material and how to submit my work online, I was already two weeks behind. And I realized that online wasn't the place for me to thrive. I needed to be in the building. I needed to like feel the chair, feel the table. I need them. I needed to be able to ask questions and talk to my cohort members. So I switched from my online program to my on-campus program. And I think that was the best decision I've ever made. Now I am, um, one of those individuals that is blessed enough to live in a state that has multiple ABA programs in the state of Illinois. I will also drop a link of all of the states that have ABA programs so, so that you know if you live in a state where you can have the on-campus experience or only have access to online. I think that's really important. It's like building your custom educational experience. It's all up to you. Lastly, we're going to talk about pass rate. Let's be real. Passing the BACB exam isn't the only thing that matters, but it is a really, really big deal. 
So why not gather that information before you choose a school? I don't know if you know this, but the BACB publishes records of how many people pass each program and they also publish records on how many people from that program pass their BACB exam on the first try. This is information that I'm going to leave in the description, but you may want to consider when choosing a program, what is the percentage of people who actually pass this program? And then after they pass, what is the percentage of people that actually pass the exam on the first try? Like, so back when I attended the Chicago School of Professional Psychology, the reason I attended it is because everyone was telling me that this is one of the top schools. They had a really high passing rate. So that was very intriguing to me because I wanted to be a one and done girly, get it in and get it out. What I didn't know is that everyone that was in my cohort from day one would not make it to the end. So although the Chicago school has a very high pass rate when it comes to the exam, the pass rate to get through the program is not as high. And I think that is correlated with um, how tedious the program is, how rigorous the program is, how demanding the program is, how much work they expect you to do in the small amount of time that you have there. So if they are requiring a lot of you, then think about it. They are preparing you to pass the exam on the first try. But if you are not prepared to get through all of that work, you may not get through all of the work. I mean, so yeah. I'm going to share the BACB examination pass rate for some of the top universities. And this data was taken in 2022. So some of the top schools are Brook University, California State University in Los Angeles, California State University in Sacramento, Florida State University and Panama City, Georgia State University, Grand Valley State, Kent State, Marquette University, University of Houston and Clear Lake, University of Kentucky, um, University of St. Joseph, University of Wisconsin, Western Michigan University, all of these schools have 100% pass rates, right? So as we go further down the list, then you go to your 97% pass rate, 94% pass rate, which is still good, 92%. You have your 91%, um, Ballard University, Brook University, St. Cloud University, Bay Path University. I used to teach at Bay Path University and they have an 89% pass rate. That's not bad. Okay. So I'm not going to read this whole list. I'm going to give you this list so that you can read up on it and so that you can find the perfect program for you. These are just some things that can help guide you in the right direction. If you have any more questions, feel free to type them in the chat. If you want me to continue videos like this and we help you find the right program so that you can start your BCBA journey, just let me know. I have no problem with diving deeper into the BACB handbook, but making it understandable and digestible. All right, so that's all we have time for today. If you got anything from this video, please do not hesitate to like, comment, and subscribe. Share this video with a friend, another aspiring BCBA, and I will see you on the next one.